to another episode of Backpack Bushcraft. Last week, we got into our seven-piece uh, sewing uh, home crafting sewing kit. Uh, we also went over four different um, stitches, I guess. Uh, just some real easy stuff that you can practice and uh, pick up real easily. Uh, what we're going to be doing this week is, uh, since last week we tested out the, the different needles uh, and we sort of have our stitching down, this week we're going to try different threading materials and different fabric materials. So before we go any further, I want to explain the parameters of the test. Using just these two needles, the cell needle and the canvas needle, I want to find out what is the best thread material to use when repairing certain types of uh, uh, fabric material that you would commonly find in a survival situation. Um, what we have here for our thread materials, we have one control group and that is going to be our upholstery thread that we used last week. Um, other stuff we have is uh, paracord. We're going to cut the mantle off and just use the inner strands. Uh, we also have some bake line. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to cut it and we're going to unravel it uh, into its uh, three separate pieces. And I have some jute twine. So we're going to use this as a substitute for some type of natural cordage. Okay, so now let's talk about the uh, fabric material and the reason I chose them. Uh, I chose these specific types of fabric because this is more likely what you're going to find in some type of survival situation. Again, for control, we're going to be using the uh, pillow fabric that we used last week. We also have some denim. I also have uh, some canvas. And last, I have uh, two types of leather. I have some very supple leather and I have some very not supple leather. Uh, now, as for the stitch that we will be using, we're going to use the simple running stitch if we can. If we are unable, we're going to be using the, I think, whip or loop stitch. Uh, so I want to explain how the test is going to be conducted. After we have sewn with it, we're then going to test the fabric to see if it will rip apart or uh, if it's going to hold. And just check mark or an X. That's about it. Yeah. Uh, so before we begin our test, let's prepare our materials. Now, if you watched last week, I was having a lot of trouble um, getting, I, I think they said they wanted like 18 inches or something like that. I, I was having a lot of trouble, so I actually have a tape measure with me this time. Or as I call a tape line. I know a lot of people don't know what I mean when I say tape line. By the way, this is a tape line. That's 20 inches. I'm going to cut right here and I'm going to come to this end and I'm going to cut the little tip off now for the bank line we're going to do the same thing just have to unknot it and then I want to just fray it and I was told to take it apart using your teeth and uh we're going to, uh, of course, unroll this. Uh, I just kind of want to get an idea of what it's going to look like unrolled first. Okay, let's see how well it. Now. Now. Again, this is upholstery thread with a canvas needle on a pillowcase, pillow sham material. So now let's test the rip. Really nice, strong, and tight. Good. Cell needle. Again, threaded with the upholstery thread. We're going to work again with the pillow sham material. And here's the test. Seems to be real strong. So next we have some uh, denim here. We're using the cell needle first. Just going to have it here in my head. Okay. And let's see the... Seems to work real well. Okay, so we have our canvas needle with upholstery thread going through the denim. Let's see how well it works. And then we'll see how strong it is. Yep, that's good. That was okay, So we're going to start with the canvas needle using upholstery thread, or what I actually call canvas thread, going through canvas. We'll see how well this one does. This seems to be very tight again. Okay, we'll be using our cell needle now. Mm. 
can't tell if that's me or the, I can't tell if that was my poor sewing or if it was the thread. I'm going to have to go with this my poor sewing. I think I missed uh, my loop and I think I didn't lock it in place. Uh, but it seems to not want to give except where it's not tied real well. Um, so I'm going to say that was the user error. The little, you know, you heard a little bit of a rip. That was all user error. This again is very strong. So with leather, we're going to go ahead and just try to sew basically these two pieces together. Uh, we're gonna start with the canvas needle. That way I'll have to work through both of them. So here we go. Because I know it's the thread and the material it has nothing to do with the uh, needle. I'm not even going to worry about um, trying the cell needle. So now we have uh, the inner string of a piece of paracord on our cell needle and we're going through the control fabric which is the pillow sham. Uh, it's actually pretty. We'll see how well it works. Oh yeah, that's, that's real nice. Uh, it, 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 you'll hear a lot of people talk about sewing with uh, the inner strands of paracord. Uh, uh, it's actually so strong that it actually will rip the fabric. That's not what we want. Um, I would definitely say you could do it. Uh, you could uh, use it. Uh, I would probably recommend against it. A piece of paracord through the canvas needle. This pillow shape. Okay, so we have canvas needle on here. I got it uh, locked in both sides. And yeah, the thread is so thick it will rip through this pillow sham. Okay, canvas needle, paracord, and denim. Let's see how it works. Okay. I think it's pretty solid. Okay, so next one. Cell needle, paracord, denim. Other side, let's get to it. Uh, that's, I sewed it in a horrible place. The thread is keeping the material together. The material's crap and wants to rip. Uh, but yeah, where it's where where there is paracord, these jeans are not going apart. So yeah, another good test. Uh, canvas needle, paracord, and canvas. It started to give away a little bit. No, it didn't. <laughs> no, it didn't. It probably won't, it probably won't break this way. Yeah, that one I knew would break because it was so close to the edge. But see if the other one will stop it. May not. No, the other one stopped it. So yeah, paracord and uh, canvas with canvas needle worked great. And we'll go ahead and do the cell needle next. Second set did better. Again, then again, and again, I did a better job sewing the second set. Okay, so we have our leather. We have our cell needle with the para cord. Uh, I'll pull this one back. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to do the uh, the whip stitch, the looping stitch, whichever one you want to call it. This cell needle has that wide head, and I thought that that wide head might be able to help cut. And it just doesn't feel like it does. Uh, to do this, I would need some type of awl. And I just don't have an awl with me. So, what we will say is that the paracord does, does go on the other side. We we can't get the paracord to work right, uh, unlike we could with the upholstery thread. Uh, we'll pull this tight, and we'll see how well it holds the leather. Now, this holds the leather pretty well. We have uh, the canvas needle with Bakelon, and we have a uh, pillow shell. We're going to test this out. And it, it, th this, this heavier gauge of uh, thread is going to be bad for the control because the control is just, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not heavy duty uh, material. We'll try the uh, cell needle next. This is the cell needle. Yeah, I mean, it's just going to rip the fabric apart. 
canvas needle, we got some bank line, and we got uh, our denim. We'll see how, we'll see if this wants to break out. <clears throat> That's tough. Uh, this time we'll go to our uh, cell needle. So we'll see if it'll rip out. Yeah, I'm telling you, this stuff is tough. Uh, before we begin with the uh, canvas, I wanted to show you guys. Uh, you can take one of these strands. It's just a little one, one of the little three strands of uh, bank line. You can actually break it down even more. Uh, now, I mean, if you really needed to uh, work on uh, something that's not so tough, such as shirt, uh, if you wanted to floss, uh, anything like that, I would definitely break it down into uh, this size. Still need no bank line going through canvas. So let's see how tough it is. Yeah, that's that's solid. <laughs> that's not going anywhere. It gave a little bit, but I think that's just uh, due to a little bit of the slack. Uh, but I don't know. For the most part, that's that's tough. Oh, I ripped it. It, yeah, okay. Can I rip it all the way out? It's hard, but I can rip it out. Probably a similar situation to the uh, pillow sham. Uh, actually, oh, that's, that's surprising me. That's surprising. It might have to do with the needle, so we'll try the canvas. Okay, so we'll see how well this one hand handles. Now, it's one to rip through the canvas too. There it is. It's one to rip on the other side too. Probably won't put uh, this uh, with your canvas, uh, or you may want to do what I did before and break it down a little bit finer. Okay, so now we have uh, the jute twine on a canvas needle. We're going to use our control. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, we may not be able to use the jute twine. Uh, one of the things you'll notice is the twine is very thick and it does not want to come through the hole the canvas needle was even made. And yeah, it's it's not wanting to come through. Um, now the reason I'm not going to be using the canvas needle for right now is if the cell needle can't do it, I know the canvas needle can't do it. I'm not wanting to go through. We'll see. We'll try some canvas, cell needle, and jute. Cause this point I'm not even able to get the lock in now. It's not want to go through here either. Yep, it won't even go through the leather. There you have it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to compile all of this information together. I'm going to uh, basically start making the video that you're watching. Well, guys, it took me 24 hours, but I finally got this chart done. Uh, so real quick, I'll go uh, explain it real fast. Uh, this is for the uh, upholstery thread. Uh, the top box is for the canvas needle. The bottom box is for cell needle. For the upholstery, as you can see here, it worked on everything except for the leather. Uh, here is the paracord, and as you can see, it did not work on the pillow shape. However, it did work on the denim and the uh, canvas, and it did work on the leather. I said it worked on the leather because, even though we didn't use it in the leather, it did dig the hole uh, when doing the... Uh, uh, upholstery so I did give it credit for both of these even though it wasn't used on this one the cell needle would not work as at all so I did not give it credit um, on the one over here this is bank line as you see bank line failed uh, just like the paracord did on the uh, pillow case the bank line uh, passed denim just as uh, the uh, paracord passed it. However, bank line was the sort of the upset to because I didn't think it would do this it did not work on canvas unlike paracord uh, and then it had the similar results with leather and again I didn't show that here it is this was made with the canvas needle too and as you can tell it's real strong uh, lastly for jute uh, it just has a row of X's okay so so now before we end this episode I do have to declare a winner and the winner is going to be the canvas needle Main points, the wedged uh, triangle at the tip of its head 
uh, allowed me to all through the leather unlike the cell needle this needle was also able to take all the types of thread that the cell needle was able to take even though it has a smaller uh, eye and the final reason was this gave me very regular and consistent stitches which is important when making that bond unlike the cell needle which was uh, leaving a lot of slack in my stitch as for the winner of the thread I'm gonna have to give it to the upholstery thread it had six check marks uh, the second closest competitor had five, and that was the paracord inner strands. The bank line had only three. Now, I do believe we could have separated both, possibly the paracord um, inner strands, as you can see here. Uh, they all unravel just like the bank line did. Or we could have used the bank line and done the same thing and got better results. But that was not in the parameters of the test, and I was unable to do that when I discovered that later on in the middle of it. Might be a good thing to do in the future, but I just can't say anything about that right now. Well, guys, that'll do it for this episode. I hope you all enjoyed it. I had a blast making it. Um, next week, we'll continue looking at the canvas nail. However, this time, we're not going to be looking at it as a sewing uh, tool. We're going to just look at it as a multi-purpose tool. What else can this thing do? Uh, in our bushcraft kit, what else can this do for us in a survival or emergency situation? And you're gonna like that episode, so make sure you like, comment, subscribe to the channel, Backpack Bushcraft. As always, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Backpack Bushcraft. And of course, you can always check out my website uh, where I post a blog every Sunday night, 10 p.m. EST. That website is www.backpackbushcraft.com. And until next time, guys, keep those fires burning. Put another log on for me.